been. As we reach the end of the term, I think we should look back on the things that we've been through during these extraordinary times. So, how about something positive, Zoe? Any ideas? Well, last year I had the problems of no school followed by summer holidays and then no school again at the start of 2021. I said, tell me something positive. Anyway, I'm glad that all of you, well, most of you, kept up with your schoolwork at home. What else? Having time to state, take things a little slower. Binge watching my favourite box sets. Following Captain <coughs> Tom, you an amazing walk to the NHS. <coughs> ah, Captain Tom, what a hero and what a legacy he's left. Let's talk more about him later on, shall we? What else made things bearable? Not having us ahead because they close result. Okay, thank you. So, on the flip side, what about the things we've struggled with? My mum's had to cut my hair herself. She tried to mess with it. Ah, uh, yes, um, I noticed. Don't worry, it will grow back. What else made things difficult? Nothing left on the supermarket shelves during the first lockdown. Watching my sh parents struggle to keep their small businesses going. Not being able to give my grandparents a hug. That was awful. At a time when we were a bit scared and just needed to be close to people, we were told we had to keep our distance. Yet, here we are, over the worst that we hope, and slowly getting back to normal. But it was tough for a while. As I said, what year it has been.
kind of look at my arrangements. Yes, I realise it's in the holiday. Yes, I think it's afternoon. No, I won't watch Lisa and again and forget. Yes, I promise. Goodbye, Karen. Mom, is this a subordinating conjunction or is it a coordinating conjunction? I think it's subordinating, but I'm not sure. Subordinating what? Match nouns, 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 verbs, and adjectives that we need to know. Let's have a look. Hi, Karen. Yes, of course I'll spell check it. Yes, I know the director will be reading it. No, it won't be full of grammatical mistake, mistakes like last time. Yes, Karen. No, Karen. You have a good day too, Karen. Now, can you indicate the submarine, you say? It's OK, Mum. I've done it. Right, I need to do history now. What, well, but it's my turn, Lupita. That's not fair. Mum, tell him. It's my... No, it's, it's my, my turn. turn. It's my mine. turn. It's mine. It's I mine. Have to. It's my turn. Hey now, what's all this noise? I'm trying to sleep. You know I'm working nights at the minute, so I just try to keep it down a bit, okay? Well, sorry, Dad, but he's hogging the computer and I've got my maths finished. Yeah, right, you just play games on it. No, you I just it's, it's, it's mine. It's mine. It's enough, it's right? Mine. You, your zero, and you do your maths. What is it exactly that you're doing? Show me. Long multiplication, but I'm really stuck on these. Well, then let's see your working out. Eh? That's not how we did it when I was in school. Is that how Miss Tensley told you to do it? Right, just stick a zero in that column, times by that, then times by that, then just add them up. But why do you... Just do it like that. There's no need to know why. Right, can they go back to bed now? Not yet. A semester from mother. Will you call for a chat? She's bored being stuck at home on her own. But I spent three hours with her yesterday, talking to her through the kitchen window when I delivered her shopping. Can't you just phone her? No, she's your mother. Anyway, I've got that report to write for Karen. And the thesis is improvised. It's my turn on the computer. I have to do it's my enough, right? What schoolwork do you still have to do? There's my history to start. I've got science work on electricity. And I've got art and diary. Right, electricity, you say? Well, I suggest you plug in the hoover and clean upstairs. Then there's a light bulb that needs changing in the downstairs loo. And something for art. And something for history. Hmm. I know. You can talk to your grandma on the phone and listen to her talk about the olden days for an hour. Now something for art. Hmm. I know. You can give the garden fence a fresh coat of grey paint. Try not to get it on the neighbour's car. Now something for Ari. Hmm. Let me think. Hi Karen. No, I'm, on, I'm not on the settee with my feet up. Yes, I know you're under a lot of pressure. Yes, I know how hard you work. No, I'm not advantage, taking advantage of your good nature. Is this something my children are? Yes, I understand. Goodbye, Karen. Ah, dear Father, one in heaven, hear my prayer. Take pity on me in my hour of need and leave me from this torture. Amen. <coughs> there you are. That's your are sorted. Right, think about my feet for now and watch this woman.
director of the WHO, the Wonderful Heroes Organisation. As you know, this new virus is spreading fast and disrupting lives all over the world. Unchecked, it has the potential to cause damage we, we can't yet comprehend. However, here at the WHO, we're putting together a crack team of real-life superheroes who will kick this virus into touch. We will work together in our communities, countries and all over the world uh, to keep us as safe as possible. We have a problem, no one can help, and hopefully we can find them. This is the C Team. I and my fellow NHS workers will not cease in our efforts to keep people strong and healthy in the battle against this virus. We will work tirelessly in hospitals, surgeries and clinics, treating the ill and needy. We will not stop until we have found a vaccine that will put an end to this awful disease. Doctors and nurses, the very backbone of our, of our health care system, but I fear there are more essential roles. Key workers, if you will, that play a part in this battle. The nation's transport workers will make sure things keep moving. This problem will not grind things to a halt, not on our watch. And we will continue to serve our communities, no matter what the risk to ourselves might be, to make sure families always have food on their tables. Our jobs will never stop being here, we, we will use our authority to help and protect everyone. This is incredible. Who knew we humans would have the incredible power to come together in our hour of need? Absolutely. We will keep building for our futures when this virus is no more distant memory, which has still be so strong. And we will teach our future generations about how we stood throughout the whole thing. CT, unite! Listen everyone, we are just at the tip of the iceberg. Many millions more risk their own safety in the fight against this virus. And everyone here, everyone here has shown such bravery, battling through hardship, loneliness, drastic change, going without your comforts and remaining steadfast throughout. Remember how you clapped for the NHS? Well, here's a chance to clap along with us again. Hit it!
That was fantastic, just what we needed. Now, before we go, I have to tell you about another hero. As my colleague explained, there were so many heroes who emerged during this pandemic, but none of them captured our imaginations as much as one certain person. An army veteran of World War II in April 2020, he decided he was going to raise £1,000 for NHS charities by walking 100 laps of his garden before his 100th birthday. As his story came national news, he was soon a household name and his fundraising snowball. He completed his 100 laps in the 24 days running up to his birthday, and the money he raised went a little beyond the 1000 he hoped for. Donations totaled over £30 million and this is still going up. In recognition of his amazing efforts, he was made Honorary Colonel on July 17, 2020. He became the Knight of his realm where Her Majesty the Queen asked him to arise, Captain Sir Tom Moore. Sadly, this remarkable gentleman passed away in February 2021 for the example he set and the inspiration he gave us to push through, to care for each other and to be positive will never be forgotten. Rest in peace, Captain Tom. So join us in an uplifting song to celebrate the life and achievements of this great man. Move over Captain America, here's to real superhero, here's to Captain Tom. <laughs>
Well, we certainly needed inspirational characters like that to give us a live through lockdown, didn't we? Ha, it's a shame they couldn't inspire a bit of common sense into some people. Do you remember what happened in the supermarkets? Yeah, pack by was that all about. If you didn't get to the supermarket super early, there wasn't anything left on the shelves. Well, like seven stuff like broccoli, who wants to eat that? Ugh. And why did they personally start stocking up the toilet roll? I read about coronavirus, and nowhere could I find all its symptoms, so the increased need to go to the loo. We weren't weak to that any. You had to use kitchen roll until that ran out too. Then what did you do? Let's just say it went back to year four Roman topic, about the whole sponge and the stick deal. Good grief. <laughs> Where's Dad? He should have been back from the shops ages ago. It's way past dinner time and I'm starving. I'm sure he won't be long now. Then we can have dinner. It's going to be fish fingers, chips and baked beans tonight. Yes! My favourite. You can't beat fish fingers, chips and beans. And is he getting those deluxe cream yogurts I like for pudding? And a bottle of coke? It's Friday, remember. We're allowed coke for Friday. Well, they were on the shopping list I gave him, so I expect so. Oh my goodness, what on earth has happened to you? Have you been run over, Dad? Have you been mugged? Have you been attacked by Miss Arnold's Labrador again? No, not that. I've been to... to Tesco. Yes, we know that. I sent you there with a list two hours ago. How did you get yourself into that state? You only went to Tesco. You don't know what it's like out there since they announced this lockdown thing. The world's gone mad. It's every man for himself. Stripping the supermarket shelves of everything, the fighting in the house. I don't know how we managed to get there out alive. That sounds terrible, Dad. But did you get a dinner? Fish fingers, chips, and beans. Just looks creamy yogurt and a bottle of Coke. I, I, uh, uh, got what's on the list, more or less. More or less. Well, did you or didn't you? Well, I did my best to make sure we had fish fingers, chips, and beans for dinner with yogurt and Coke to drink. Sort of. It's just going to take a bit of imagination, okay? Now, I know it wasn't on the list, but for all now, I've been thinking. You guys don't eat enough green veg, and there's plenty of peas and broccoli left on the shelves. What about the stuff you were supposed to get? Oven chips? Ah, oh, yes, oven chips. They run out of those, but they have parsnips. We can cut them up and then oil brush them and then oven bake them. Ta-da, chips! You're joking. At least, I'll just stick to the fish fingers and... Baked beans. Ah, yes, beans. They run out of those, but I was thinking lovely chickpea and tomato puree. Yeah, that's gross. At least tell me you got the fish fingers. Technically, yes, we have fish fingers. Maybe not what you're quite used to, but fingers of the fish nonetheless. I managed to get four tins of sardines. And um, we can mush them up and then oil, and then we can mush them up and then roll them into finger sized portions. Here's the best bit. And here's the best bit. We don't need cooking, we can eat them cold. No way. At least tell me you managed to find the yogurts. Um, uh, ah, yes, yogurt. They've run out of those, but I managed to get the last two litres of milk in the whole entire shop. And here's the best bit it's out of date. If we leave it in a warm place for a while. Hey, put a stone. Yoga! That, that is disgusting. disgusting. Well, what about the Coke? Let me guess. You thought that we could just get some Oxo cubes and then pop one into a bottle of sparkling water and give it a quick shake? Great minds think alike, eh? Oh, I'm sorry, everyone. I tried. I really did to get fish fingers, chips, beans, yogurt, Coke. There's just none left. We know it's not your fault. Well done with trying your best. I think it's around the news that takeaways are allowed to stay open. I'll give the Chinese quit ring, shall I? Yes, Chinese. Great idea. But Dad, what's in the other bags? Ah yes, I managed to pick these up on my way home. 20 coppers to pay Darvish of Times. And what, may I ask, are we supposed to do with those? It's not an attempt to get us to read more instead of being on screens, is it? No, there was just one more thing left on the list that they've run out of in the shop. What was that? Ta-da! Toilet troll. Now 
chips. But we've no chance of striking goals. where you could see them for how long. I really don't envy the people who have to stand up in front of the cameras week after week and update the na nation. Here we go again. I didn't get any sleep last night Not worried about this. Me neither. It seems that every week we have to tell the people something different. No wonder they're getting confused. Maybe we're just not making things clear enough for them. Don't leave the house unless you have to leave the house. Don't go to work unless you have to go to work. You can mix with you can mix with people in a bubble of six. And this is an ornament and it hasn't rained for three days. Then there's tears. You're in this tear, they're in that tear. The whole thing has me in tears. Which is why we need a different approach. So did you manage to read the document I prepared? Do you think it will work? Well, it's worth a try. Okay. It's certainly radical. I'll give you that. We might as well give it a shot. Okay then, let's do this. Thank you everybody for joining us in today's COVID briefing. Now, as you're aware, the situation with regards to this virus remains serious. We understand that the instructions we have previously given you may have been unclear. However, while we wait for the next scientific findings from which we will come up with another set of different instructions for you, there are three things we need you to do. Firstly, wash your hands at, at every opportunity. Secondly, keep a two meter distance from people when you leave your homes. And thirdly, let a mask reduce the risk of transmitting and contracting the virus through your breath. Now we've said these things before, but many people still don't seem to understand. So, to shake things up a little bit, to make the message a little more <coughs> funky and groovy, especially, especially for you younger and cooler dudes out there. So let's, in a socially distanced manner, of course, rock! Oh. 
social distancing, remember? Oh yes, still you mean. Well, my word, that was very, very energetic. I got a bit carried away there. Look, I even took my tie off with rock and roll. I'm sure we're going to need refreshments after that performance, so we play cups of tea and biscuits backstage if you'd like to join us. That's very kind of you, but we'll pass. Got to keep safe. Right. Is that concise tea biscuits? Doesn't mean to like say rock and roll, does it? Yes. Well, I think that was for our own need. So, same time next week. Can't wait. On today's show we have a young man with the world record for the highest scoring Times Table Rock Stars and the world first bipedal dog. Yes, really excited for that. We've also got Miss Britch in the kitchen cooking up a storm. But first we're joined by two small business owners whose lives have been affected by the coronavirus pandemic. They don't look small to me, Holly. No, they own small business owners. They own small businesses. They're not business owners who are small. Okay, I think you understand. Anyway, Leah runs her own beauty salon in Bromley in South London and Lucy run, owns her own pub in Loughborough. Thanks for joining us. Good, good morning. morning. So Leah, tell us how your business was affected. Well, I had to close my salon and my income was affected zero and arguably worse, dozens of my customers went not to have their hours on fleet. That sounds terrible. Yes, it really was, financially <coughs> and mostly. It was a difficult period, as I'm sure it was for many of your viewers. Absolutely. Lucy, were you affected in a similar way? Obviously, Holly, yes. The pub had to close down, and we had to throw away a lot of beer, which made lots of people very unhappy. I bet it did. Such a terrible waste. Indeed, although I must say some of the cheaper stuff did an excellent job cleaning the drain on the way down, so it wasn't such a total loss. <laughs> well, silver linings and all that. So you both had a hard time, just like a lot of business owners across the UK. Well then, right at the end of the tunnel though, you're both open again. Yes, it's wonderful to be back open again. But on the high street, no, no longer it's a night for living dead. Yes, and my brother's finally back to life. Sometimes a little too much back to life when the sun comes out, but I'll let that one slide. So, thanks for joining us in the studio, chaps. Now it's over to our grow reporters talking to some other members of the public across the UK. First, it's over to Ruby Station in Belfast. Thanks, and I'm here today in Belfast to talk to a trained dancer, Brianna. Hi, thanks for having me. What has it been like not being able to train throughout the pandemic? Personally, I found it quite hard to maintain my fitness as my studio has been closed for so long. Interesting, how did you work around this struggle? I walk my dog every day and continuously watch Joe Wicks videos with my family and friends online. Well, it's good to hear that you're getting back to normal. Now it's over to Hattie, so she's in the living room. Thanks, Ruby. You join me here live in Liverpool speaking to a boxer who has been affected by coronavirus. Thanks for having me on the show. So how has COVID affected you? The restrictions have meant that I haven't had a proper workspace to train in. So how did you train? I worked from home, but that came with its own struggles, such as boxing alone. Well, thanks so much for speaking to me today. Finally, we're joining Thomas in Bristol. Thanks, Hattie. Now we're joined by an office worker here in Bristol, Harry. Hi, Harry. Hello, thanks for inviting me on this show. So what changed for you in this unfortunate time? I've had to work at home, which means I can wear my pyjamas all day. What helped with home working? I got my friends to help me with working because homeschooling my children and working at the same time is quite tiring. That does sound quite hard. Hopefully things are better now. School's reopening. Thanks for everything. Back to the studio. Hi, yes. Uh, what wonderful contribution from our viewers across the UK. It's time now for a short break, but join us back as Phil will be taking a bath in baked beans to raise money for a donkey sanctuary. Jobs have been lost, livelihoods have been ruined, and families have struggled to adapt to huge changes. 
Yes, we've taken a look at a few as aspects of lockdown and why it's hard to avoid this thing but the pressure these and other things have created are very real. And the effects of social distancing have caused loneliness, isolation and depression in lots of vulnerable people. In our efforts to shield older family members, they have often gone months without the people they love. And of course, lives have been lost. Some of us may be more affected by this than others, but as individuals, a family, a school, a nation and the world, we've all been touched by what's happened. So now let's take a moment to think about and remember all the people who throughout these difficult times have paid the highest price. <laughs> face you could at the street church press face to face to tell us how you're feeling hello everyone yes it's been a crazy few months but here we are the finish line in sight and we're celebrating hey pamela say hello to youtube come on pam don't be shy the great press of pandemic without whose efforts we wouldn't be here come on pam say something hi well yes it's been an amazing breakthrough but this is our jobs this is just what we do and and this is where it all happened 
We've been locked in this little lab 24 seven, but now we can relax a little and some of us are a little more relaxed than others. Right, we have some final loose ends to tie up before we send this vaccine off to the manufacturers. So it's goodbye from the lab. So for a Demic, for a face to face, let's crack on. Um, wait, hang on, where is it? The final formula, I left it here. I'm sure I did. You have got to be kidding. Um, after all our hard work, we, I mean you, have lost it. This can't be happening. I've given up my life to work on this. I haven't seen my children in a year. You idiot. Who are you calling an idiot? I have a PhD from Oxford University. And I've been nominated three times for a Nobel Prize. If anyone sees it, it's you. This part is your idea. Oh, so you're awake, are you? And what are you sniggering at? This isn't funny. And you should be helping us. You should see your faces. This is definitely going on YouTube. Excuse me, have you lost your marbles? Do you, are you for real? Do you understand what's happening? We've lost the formula. And you're going to put this disaster on YouTube? Stop filming at once. Relax, we haven't lost the formula. formula. It's here, in our pockets. Wait. Well, it was in my pocket. It must have fallen out when we went to buy more champagne. You, you idiot! idiot! Just joking, it's here, safe and sound, but really, you're crazy. You pranked us, but why would you prank us? Oh, it's just a bit of a laugh, and now people can see that scientists aren't a boring bunch. Guys, sense of humour. Scientists can take a joke, can't they? Yes? No? Oh, right. Ha, did you see the look on her face? Are they right though? Do, do the people think we are, we scientists are a boring bunch? How can we change that? By singing a song and sticking it on YouTube. C come on gang, let's show the world there's more to us than meets the eye. <laughs>
everyone went through. One day, children like you will learn about our experiences in their history lessons. Hello, we're from Public Health in London. Today, we're going to inspect your Trevor to Kill rules that you've put in place. Uh, all right, um, okay then. What exactly are you looking at? This child is walking the wrong way on the one way system. This sign isn't clearly marked at all. And you people are far too close together. Here, you sister gets it wrong. I think we need to talk to your head teacher about these infringements. Where's Miss Brown? Um, I think she's in the meeting, actually. If. It's probably just a Zoom meeting. No one pays attention to those. Come on, chaps, let's see what she's got, she's got to say for herself. Wow, I'm so glad that they've gone. Gosh, I really can't wait for this to be over so we don't have to put up with stuff like that anymore. But maybe when it's probably over, we'll notice if things have changed for the better. Do not take anything or anyone for granted. And we'll make the most of all the opportunities to do all those things and to be with all those people we've missed since this craziness started. Everybody, all that's left to say is thank you for joining us. Here's to the future and finally being free to watch all the possibilities. Imagine and realise all that can be. Now, let's lift the roof off this place.